Hello and a warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Kukule Tuzele. In studio with me, I'm joined by Sean Ashton and Liam Hector, both from Anchor Capital. Now today we're talking Peregrine Holdings. Founded back in 1996, Peregrine is a leading financial services group providing individuals and institutions with the investment management solutions in wealth and alternative assets. Peregrine comprises of a number of niche financial services businesses in which it holds either significant management control or ownership. To tell us more about this a particular company from an investment per perspective, I'm joined by uh, Liam. And maybe if you can give us your view about the little uh, 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 subunits that uh, make up the Peregrine Group. Sure, Gugu. Um, I think you summed it up very well to start with. Um, so, so Peregrine is a holding company for niche financial services businesses. Um, over the last few, few years, they've done very well to diversify their earnings away from straight wealth management and alternative assets to to growing their brokerage business, which is a significant earnings contributor, and and the, the recent investment in Java. Mm -hmm. um, so Java adds an advisory earnings um, base into the into the mix, and that further diversifies it and further justifies a possibly a higher valuation on, on the share. Mm. And it's not just only focused on the South African market, I understand the operations in the UK as well, Sean? Sure, Stenham is probably the, the key one to talk about in terms of their, their, their UK operations. <coughs> and that's, a, that's a, a, a UK and Channel Islands business which manages about 3.2 billion rands worth of assets under management. Just to explore <coughs> the company further though, if you look at the uh, contribution of earnings, uh, how is it split up though? Because with all these different subunits, uh, uh, is there one particular organisation that uh, sticks out as uh, the major subsidiary? Sure, I think Citadel would probably be the biggest uh, contributor to annuity earnings within the group. So that's about a third of their earnings. Citadel being a niche wealth manager in South Africa, I think most people in the high net worth space would be quite familiar with, with Citadel. Um, so in terms of the current, the recent results that were released uh, last week, the, the Citadel earnings uh, from annuity earnings grew about 17%, which we like, because ultimately that's, that's the earnings stream that we place a higher multiple on than performance fees, which is also a quite a big contributor to the, ult the overall earnings of Peregrine. So mm -hmm. when we look at this from an investment point of view, we want to place a higher PE on the annuity earnings and a lower multiple on the performance fee earnings because we ultimately don't see them as, a s as sustainable as the annuity earnings. Just on that though, do we often find that uh, asset managers and their earnings are often linked to the market performance uh, when the markets take a bit, a, a, bit of, a bit of a dip like what we've seen of late? Uh, uh, does that necessarily translate into a, a company like Peregrine's uh, numbers? Possibly less so for a company like Peregrine because of the alternative assets that, they've, the assets that they do have within the group. So Peregrine has got a, got a sort of flagship hedge fund business inside it as well, so that's Peregrine Capital and they, they make money on the up and the down. So they, they run long, short equity portfolios. Where the market's going up or going down, they can make money, and, and that adds to the earnings base. The annuity earnings of the business is what we really want to focus on, and that's, and that's ultimately what we place a higher multiple on. So we, we, we tend to strip the performance fees out when we analyze what kind of PE the business is actually trading on. Looking at the graph, though, of 2015, the <coughs> uh, performance fees there did quite a bit, uh, Sean. Absolutely. That's why when you look at the 2015 earnings of Peregrine Capital, you might reach the conclusion that it's at a very high base. Yeah. Um, <coughs> that, that's the particular part of the business that I would focus on and say, well, performance fees are, are very high. You need to normalize that. So when we valued Peregrine Capital, I think they made something of the order of, it was well north of 100 million rands, their 50% share, because they shared 50% with <coughs> the group and with the management in terms of ownership. So Peregrine's share of Peregrine Capital, the performance fee component was well north of 100 million rand in this particular year. And that compared with uh, something of the order of 23 million rand's annuity earnings uh, from that business. So typically, if you look at the last few years, they've been making performance fees in the region of about 50 to 60 million rand on average. Um, so the, the way we've tried to value this asset is to say, well, you know, the performance fee component over time should be lower than, than what it was this year. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you should place probably a, we think conservatively, maybe a 3 or 4p multiple on performance fees. And then for the, for the non-performance fee components of the business, in other words, how much money they would make if they just earned their base fees, um, <coughs> you know, that you can place well north of a 10 times p multiple. So when you look at the business, uh, Peregrine Capital specifically it's in, in its entirety, <coughs> you probably land up with a p multiple anywhere between 6 and 8 times, I would guess, including performance fees. So not a, high, not a highly rated asset, a very, very good asset in the sense that it throws off a lot of cash mm -hmm. and, and they can obviously use that to pay dividends. It's a great business, 
um, but the market will never attribute a very, very high P multiple to uh, the, the, the non-sustainable part of the earnings base, I which, take is, which is very high. I think that's a good thing then. Um, well, it's a good thing in the sense that you're, not, you're never having to pay a very, very high multiple for that, for that business. Um, and you probably shouldn't, mm. um, but uh, with that, once once you own it, you're getting the great dividend stream as as long as they keep delivering. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so if we go back to the valuation, uh, which you touched on briefly, uh, Liam, uh, together with Sean, uh, maybe if you can split that uh, contribution again. We heard about uh, 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 obviously Citadel being the major contributor there, but Centum is that one that might be growing in the long term? Yes, yeah, so Stenum, we we see Stenum as a business that's Stenum. Stenum. Apologies, yeah, yes, I said so it wrong. So Stenum, <laughs> Stenum is a fiduciary trust business as well as an asset management business, and they're located in just outside the UK, um, up north. And and they, uh, the Peregrine Management, have actually made an acquisition in that space by buying a, another Canon Trustees, which is another trust and fiduciary business. So that's very sticky. Those earnings are sticky, and. Uh, we we see the hard current between the hard currency earnings that you're getting out of that and the stickiness of those those assets that they've got. We we th we see the valuation is quite high on Stedham. Mm -hmm. What about growth opportunities going further? You mentioned the high dividend here. Are we still looking at potential acquisitions that the company can do to uh, further its multi-pronged approach? Yeah. I think that the <coughs> there's certainly potential for that because they're not paying out all of their earnings. You must you know when you think about a business like Peregrine, it's quite similar in terms of the, the cash flow generation to something like uh, Coronation, maybe not quite as strong, because mm. the broking side of the business will have some working capital that it needs to retain for, you know, to, from a regulatory point of view to keep that business, um, you know, just f for daily run, day to day running of the business. But it still generates a lot of cash. It probably converts very, very close to 100% of its earnings in cash. So they could actually pay, you know, easily 70, 80% of the earnings out as a dividend. They're not currently doing that. It's, uh, it's about half half of the earnings that they're paying out as a dividend. So I would expect to see select acquisitions here and, here and, here and there. But I think um, certainly our, our, our interpretation of management's attitude towards acquisitions is one of wariness, in the sense that it's not always easy to do deals in the financial services space. You're dealing with people, you're essentially buying people, um, and, and that comes with its own risks. Uh, so, so I think that, that they're quite circumspect about uh, their, their view on, on, on that. They have done acquisitions. But I wouldn't expect you to, s to see Peregrine go, go out in a big bang approach buying lots and lots of businesses. I think the, the core of what they have is likely to be the bulk of the, the value going forward. Um, and, and the growth of, <coughs> you know, the organic growth of those businesses is what is likely to drive the value creation of the group going forward. <coughs> it's also important to understand that um, about 15% of the value of Peregrine is actually proprietary investments that, th that the group has itself in a lot of their, their own products that they run. Mm. So for example, Peregrine Capital runs a hedge fund. These guys uh, invest shareholders' money in that hedge fund, um, as well as some of the, the Stenum assets that they have. So that amounts to about a billion rands, uh, which is about 15% of, of the value of the group is, is actual proprietary investment. So when we value it, <coughs> you know, we value those investments at face value and we take the earnings out. Mm. Um, so we're not trying to put a P on that number. Um, but overall, when you look at the, the valuation, valuation of the group, we think fairly conservatively, um, you can arrive at about 32 rands per share of value. Um, and, but that's applying a very low multiple on performance fees. We're quite punitive on that side of things. Um, and and that, that effectively amounts to the performance fee component of the, uh, of, of the group being about 7% of the value but 25% of earnings if you strip out the proprietary investments. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we, you know, we're kind of penalizing that side of the business and we're still arriving at a, at a value which is significantly higher than the current share price. Well, time now to get our analysts' uh, view on this particular stock, buy, hold or sell. <music> Liam, buy, hold or sell Peregrine Holdings? I think right now the valuation offers investors a margin of safety, one that we, en we enjoy. Um, when we look at the business, uh, we, we don't use the 2 Rand 70 EPS number that they reported recently. What we would do is we'd strip out the performance fees out of that and we would say on an annuity basis, what are we actually paying going forward? And, and that looks like about a Ford 15 times earnings uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to the, the Ford 9.5 times earnings that you would see if you used the headline earnings of 2 Rand 70. So we use a number of about 1 Rand 40 as a sustainable earnings figure. And we think that the, the growth, the, the multiple expansion in this business will happen as the shift in earnings moves from 
a, perform, a predominantly possibly 50% prop income and, pro and performance fees to more like if those are contributing to earnings uh, to the tune of about 30%, we'd be a lot more comfortable. And we think then the market would start re-rating the share as a whole. And, uh, and that will happen over time, we feel. Now that management have disclosed what portion of performance fees and prop proprietary income are in the total earnings base, we think that now that's a, a positive signal to the market that they're willing to disclose that going forward and they're happy that that shift in earnings will change. So there's some uh, potential for growth, nice dividend as well. I take it you agree that it's a buy, Sean? Absolutely, yeah. I think there's, a, there's, there's definitely a margin of safety. It's comfortably worth 32 rand a share. Uh, I think that's a very conservative number. It includes a 10% holding company discount, if you will, for, for the group head office in terms of how we've come up with our fair value. <coughs> the other point I want to touch on, just f from what Liam was mentioning, it's, it's not to say that they're never going to earn performance fees again. Mm. So when we talk about that 1 Rand 40, that's kind of bare bones earnings, stripping out performance fees. You know, they, they will likely make an element of performance fees because that's part of the business model of certainly Peregrine Capital um, and, uh, <coughs> and, 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 and Citadel as well. And, and that, that ultimately is in cash. So when you're earning those, those fees, that they can pay dividends with that. Um, and I think the, you know, when you, when you look at the dividend yield, sure, it, it, that might be a number that, that will be, f you know, fa fairly lumpy, but at, fo at a forward 6%, I think you, you pay it to be patient. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly attractive. And the brokerage business, is that also one that uh, you like, Liam? Yes, so we haven't touched on that yet. The brokerage business uh, is, is now the third in the country by value and by volume, and, and it it's operates a very lean structure. So they don't employ a sell-side analyst that they have to pay, pay big salaries to. The service that they offer is, is good. The the um, the platform that they use is also superior in, in its in its market, and and they've also really captured that prime brokerage market in South Africa. So we think that that business should be able to sustain 20% plus earnings growth, mm -hmm. and and ultimately it's a very valuable business. Uh, the business services the hedge funds. So there's a lot of synergies within this group. You know the hedge funds trade via the prime brokerage desk uh, and, and they earn brokerage off their hedge funds. So, I mean, the, these businesses help, help each other along, really. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like a positive story coming out of uh, Peregrine Holdings. And that's where we leave it for this week's edition of Talking Stocks. A big thank you to both my guests, Sean Ashton and Liam Hector, both from Anchor Capital. Join us again next time where we talk more stocks. <laughs>